early on when there were no vaccines and no hope of any. There's never been a coronavirus vaccine. But in those first few months, when people were dying in big numbers, there were no therapeutic drugs, really no vaccine, and it looked incredibly serious for mankind. Mm. At that point, I felt the only answer was the blunt instrument of a lockdown. As it went on, I think the argument for lockdown became less and less convincing. And I always believed that all the subsidiary effects of lockdown on other health issues, heart disease, uh, cancer, and so on, were going to come back and, and haunt us. The question then was, where was the pendulum right. on that deal? Well, look, France, right, let's, let's pause it there. Um, okay, so you got spooked, and so you, su you supported totalitarianism. I mean, how else can you describe that? I say the argument for lockdowns, you to say it was strongest at the beginning. Well, the argument for lockdowns at the beginning was we need two weeks. That was the argument. Was we need two weeks so that the hospitals aren't overwhelmed. That was the argument. So if you want to say that that was the strongest of all the lockdown arguments, like, uh, all right, fine. But it was a it was a lie. I mean, it was just a lie to get people to accept them. And then the lockdown stayed for months or months and months. I mean, by by summer of 2021, there were still areas that were locked down. And there were still areas that were quasi locked down well beyond that. So, again, it's like, yeah, then you started to weigh out the, the fact. No, what happened is then you started to realize the carnage that you were causing and realize little by little that the lockdowns weren't producing results. Um the, the areas that didn't lock down were doing as good, in some cases better, than the areas that did lock down. So no, it's not, it's not like, oh, there was a great argument for it and then it became less and less. It's like, no, the argument for it was always bullshit. Always bullshit. Um, and uh, again, it's like, you could say, oh, people were dying in like these huge numbers, but we knew right from the beginning who was dying. You know? It was not this, COVID was never an indiscriminate killer of all people equally. There were certain groups of people who were at high risk. And so if you want to even make an argument, the argument would have been to protect those people, the people who are at high risk. Uh, we would have been so much better off, so much better off uh, 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 all across the world if that was the, you know, the way that we played it. Um, even better off if they just didn't do anything. If, if governments around the world just told people what they thought COVID was, and that's that. We would have been so much better off. No. Damn shame. Um, and it's a damn shame that there were people like Pier Pierce Morgan who were, you know, not only, again, for people who don't know, it's not only that Pierce Morgan supported these policies, but he like ruthlessly attacked all of us. You know, it's like, it, I don't know, dude, there's just the, the tone here just isn't what it should be. It's like, you can't just like demonize in the most vicious ways all this whole group of people and then admit that they got it right the whole time and that you were completely wrong and not you know give me something dude some some indication that this actually like weighs on you that this means something that's just look these are just just my feelings in terms of like how you'd view this as like oh can this person be trusted or not going forward